This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And welcome on this 4th of July weekend. We will have lunch afterwards, and I don't want to take any thunder away from an announcement, but I want to mention my support this uh, this lunch, uh, and please stay. It's going to be a classic 4th of July lunch, fr fried chicken with all the good stuff. Uh, it will The donations will be to support the Angel Children Christmas gifts. So be generous in uh, your donation. Um, but there may be an an another announcement on this, and, but I just want to, to emphasize uh, uh, this is a good cause, a good lunch and a good cause. At the end of the service, I'll say a blessing for it. Um, I do have a note from Ruby Poole that I have been asked to read from Ruby. Now, last week, you may remember, we had the tragic loss of Richie Ryan, and Ruby has written to us, and she says, Thank you. Thanks to everyone for your prayers, cards, phone calls. It was a great shock to me. He, Richie was only 36 years old and had a heart attack at work. He leaves behind Sherry and his three children. Thanks for all your support and prayers for everyone. Uh, um, it has really been a great shock to me. Love and prayers, Ruby Poole. So bless you all for your support to them and we will continue to see what we can do. That's all that I wanted to mention. Are there other announcements? Once again, as you know, Bible school starts next Sunday. So I'm making this last plea. Everybody who has volunteered, thank you so much for volunteering. And I hope to see you there, although I might be a little too busy, but I'm hoping to see everything that goes on. And make sure you bring your grandchildren, your children, your neighbor's kids. Tell them all about Bible school. It's going to be a big thing this year. I'm just here to um, tell you guys that the Thomas Treasure Senior Group will be taking a field trip this Wednesday. Um, we have actually rented a van for it, and uh, we're going to be leaving the church at 11 o'clock, and we're going to Moxville to the Miller's Restaurant and have lunch on your own, and then we're going to head to see Dr. Rob and see all his collectibles and his museum that he has put together. Um, so if you're interested in going, please see me right over here after the service, uh, and we'll get you further details or whatever, but um, I'd like to fill up the van, and if we have more people to go than what the van can, can hold, then uh, we have some other people that have volunteered to drive, so please consider going with us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, today for the lunch, we have our new tables and chairs set up downstairs, so we're going to try something new that's really not new. It's just something we do every Easter, and we don't do it any other meals. Is When you go down the stairs to the fellowship hall, uh, line up in the hallway, and you'll come in. Uh, the do donation box is right there. You'll make an immediate right and start the line going out that way. Um, we're doing that to try to enhance the space in the room for the tables. And I do want to encourage you to come to the meal today. We're having southern fried chicken, uh, which I think this is pretty important to note. Uh, this is being donated, actually, by Debbie Suggs. I, our class wanted to do fried chicken, and none of us were experts at making fried chicken. So I reached out to her, and uh, when I told her what we were doing it for, for the families for Christmas, she said, I'll do it and donate it. So um, a big thanks to her to uh, donate uh, that to our class to help these families at Christmas time. We're having southern fried chicken, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, green beans, slaw, pickles, and beets. And for those of you that always come for the desserts, peach cobbler with ice cream and banana pudding. <laughs> the other announcement I want to make, we have quite a bit of cardboard from the tables and chairs. And just to try to not just let things go to waste, I know a lot of the men like to have a scrap of cardboard if you're working on something to throw down under it to catch the grease so it don't get on your floor. 
Anybody that would like to take any of the cardboard uh, that's down there, we're gonna make some crafts out of the pallets, so we're gonna make use of that uh, for the bazaar. Uh, but please take it with you. Uh, anything that's left there after this week will be taken to recycling. Thank you. Any other announcements? Well then, um, I uh, do know we have some visitors from uh, Kentucky, welcome to you all. They're, I think they're upstairs. Um, um, and some guests, please come in. Yeah, come on in. We're, all eyes are on you. Welcome. <laughs> we love having you visit. And uh, other guests and visitors, we welcome you all. Um, let's see, we're going to begin worship. Uh, the, the, we'll do just one verse of open our eyes Lord and it's on page 66 and the words are also in the bulletin so let's rise and sing this opening hymn appreciating our freedom to worship God. We draw near to God who rules over all nations. We seek to live in harmony and peace together with all peoples on the earth. And let us sing America the Beautiful. It's on page 799.
let us pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And let us pledge to the Christian flag the words in our bulletin, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all mankind in service and love. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you have blessed us with America, and we pray that you would bless America. May your spirit hover all over this great land this morning, and especially here in our midst at Grace Lower Stone. Let us hear your voice, and we ask, Lord, that you would receive our praises and our prayers. And we pray in your name. Amen. Oh, and together we pray the, the prayer that you taught us, the one that begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. And please be seated. And we have this morning the choir giving us music ministry of Heal Our Land. At this time, I would like to ask the deacons to come forward as we get prepare to worship with our gifts. And as they come forward, I'll read from Galatians 6. You reap whatever you sow, says the Apostle Paul. So wherever we have the opportunity, let us work for the good of all, for the nurture of this country, this family of faith, and for the ministry of this church to our community and our world in need. Let us now give joyfully as we present our tithes and offerings. And the offertory is Give Thanks on page 170.
thanks to the Holy Forgiver. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for living. Jesus Christ, for none. Give thanks for the Holy One. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ in His Son. to sing the doxology. Praise God from who all Let us pray. Lord, we lift these offerings up to you and we ask that you would bless them and the hearts that have given them. These things we pray in the name of, of the one who gave his all for us, Jesus Christ. Amen. And please be seated. And this morning for the children's message, we have Mr. Bob Rummage. Nice size crowd this morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah. Really, really, really good. Yeah. 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 Something special happening this week? No, nothing special. How about maybe Tuesday? Is there anything special going on Tuesday? Ooh, what? The parade. Yeah. What's the parade for? The Fourth of July. The Fourth of July. Okay. What's special about the Fourth of July? You know, it's also called Independence Day. Yes, sir. It's from that, um, I think the Revolutionary War and then we beat them. Yeah. Them and, uh, under our right, so we declared independence from England, right? <coughs> okay, yes, ma'am. Do you honor the people inside? Yeah, well, kind of, yeah, kind of. One of the things that I want to talk about about that, about 4th of July, you know, those guys made some really important decisions, right? <laughs> because we were over here in the United States. You know, England's a long, long, long way away from here, right? Way across the Atlantic Ocean. So you can't even walk to get there. You couldn't take a bike or a car or a train. You had to take a, a boat or a plane, right? Well, back then they had to take a boat because they didn't have planes. So it's a long way away. But, you know, all the people that made the rules were in England. And then all the people that had to follow the rules were over here, right? And so that's probably one of the reasons they really, really weren't happy with all the things that were going on because they didn't get to be part of making the rules, right? They just had to live under somebody else's rules. So somebody decided that we were going to break away from England, right? Pretty big decision, isn't it? Would you like to have to make a decision like that? And how, how would you do that? What would you, how would you make a decision like that? Pretty hard to do. So what I want to talk to you about was, was making decisions. And in doing that, I left my Bible up there. I'll do it this way. That's fine. Um, bear with me just a second.
There we go. Okay. Had to do it the harder with with the electronics, right? Okay. What the what the Bible says, and I guess they're talking about making decisions also, says uh, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep searching and you will find. Keep knocking and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who searches finds. The one who knocks on the door, the door will be opened. So what they're saying is I've got to get the right page again. There we go. You know, if we make decisions, sometimes you, let me think, have you ever done, uh, see, rock, paper, scissors? You know, we go scissors or a rock. Or, is that a good way to make a decision? Yeah, paper. Is that a good way to make a decision, you think? Because I know what happens, or at least in my house what happens. Is you keep going two out of three or three out of four until finally you get the right answer, right? You get to do what you want to do. Or maybe there are things like uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. So you keep going until finally you get the answer you want. Can you imagine if they used that kind of decision making when we had the Revolutionary War? They had, you know, in part of the Revolutionary War, in part of this thing, we had the Boston Tea Party, right? And so they had three ships of uh, tea. And what they did, they dressed up as Indians and they snuck on board and threw it off into the ocean, didn't they? Yeah. So they did, did a lot of things that could be dangerous. So they don't need to use any meeny, miny, mo or rock, paper, scissors, right? So what the, what the Bible is talking about doing is going to God, seeking God first, right? So you stop and you think about, well, what would God have me do? What would, what would God do if he were making this decision for me? And then you pray. Prayer is an important part of that, isn't it? Making, making any kind of decision? Probably is. Probably is. We should always ask God if we're making a decision. Right? I don't guess you should ask God what clothes you should wear in the morning, though. What do you think? You think that's an important decision you need to ask God about? No, probably not. But you know, he probably wouldn't mind if you did. Um, it says, knock. We will face many, many doors of opportunity in life. So you have lots of different chances to do things in life. Um, maybe a friend will come up and say, hey, you guys want to go to the parade with us Tuesday? or go to fireworks or something like that. There's lots of, lots of things that you get a chance to do. Well, what they're saying is that we need to always include God in what we do and how we, how we make our decisions. It's a real important part of how we do what we do. Make sense? Yeah. I think I just meant zoom. <laughs> All right, but the, the important part of this is that we always pray when we ask God to help us make decisions, okay? So let's pray real quick. Father, we, we just thank you for, for Independence Day, for the folks who worked so hard to, to give us independence, for those who work hard to keep our independence, and, and Father, for, for those who protect our country. We thank you, Lord, for these kids, and we pray that they would always seek you in any decision they make, that your will would be done throughout each of our lives, each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I did bring you something to color. Whoops, let me throw them on the ground. Thank you guys. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, kids. And we will move now into the time uh, for our prayers together. And I'll um I will lift up the family of Richie Ryan in prayer. Bertha Miller has been moved to um, Autumn Care, which is on um, 
Brendel Ferry Road, just outside of the Salisbury um, city limits. And um, so we'll remember Bertha as she is undergoing some therapy. And then um, Mayford Carter is in Genesis uh, for, for also some rehabilitation uh, for his, um, the pneumonia that he had. And he's, um, I, I, I'm repeating myself maybe, Genes he's in Genesis. Are there other prayer requests for today? Yes. Who? Jerry Young. And what's the situation? Okay. Thank you. Other requests? And is he ill or? Cancer. Thank you, Tammy. Other requests? And what's that situation? Okay. Other requests? Other requests? Bonnie Daly. Bonnie Daly? Is okay. And her daughter's name, first name, do you know? Amy? Amy? Anything else? Well, then let us pray. <clears throat> when the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy. And we thank you and praise you, Lord, for you have been gracious to our land and to our church. We ask, Lord, that you would bless America and that you would be with all those who are traveling today and in the near future. Uh, we ask for your traveling mercies and we pray for your deep spiritual blessings, not only on Grace Lowerstone, but on this nation. Lord, we do come before you for we have lost some souls this past week. We've lost Richie Ryan. We have lost Jimmy Ford. We have lost Amy. And so we ask you, Lord, to remember the promises that you have given to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that whoever may call upon you will be saved. So we pray, Lord, forgive their sins through Christ and any others who have passed away and receive them into that special place that you have prepared for them. And we pray for the family of Richard R Richie Ryan and for the family of Jimmy Ford and for Bonnie Daly and, and, and others who grieve the loss of Amy, that you would console them and comfort them. And we know that there, there are always difficulties associated with the loss of a loved one. And so, Lord, you know what all those details and difficulties are, and we ask, Lord, that you would help and, and console Lord, we pray for the sick and the suffering. We remember Bertha Miller, who's rehabilitating um, and 
and um, Autumn Care and for Mayford Carter, who's in Genesis, and we ask, Lord, you would encourage them and strengthen them. Help them with their attitudes, for they certainly long to be at home. And there are others as well from our church family that, that we have not mentioned by name, but you know who they are, Lord. Help them and heal them and strengthen them. We pray for Jerry Young. We pray for Rich Foster. We pray for Harry Folden. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, Lord. Just say the word and they will be healed. We ask, Lord, that you remember any special request that we will lift up to you in silence right now. Lord, bless and protect our country and those who protect our country in uniforms, um, and these can be local or in the military, those who are near and far away, we pray for their protection and that you would bring them home soon. We pray, Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in this dark world, for we do know that there is trouble. And we pray for your peace and for your, your coming. We pray, Lord, for our leaders, that they might have their eye upon you and that they might um, follow what, what, what's on our currency uh, in God we trust. We pray, Lord, that, that our leaders would be godly people, that they would seek the benefit of others, that they would be uh, moral and godly leaders. And we pray, Lord, <clears throat> for your blessing on our community and our church and all who are in need. And we pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn of worship, let's rise to sing For the Beauty of the Earth on page 793.
Please be seated. Well, our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. And this is Jesus Christ speaking. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth. He will certainly not lose his reward. So let's rise to sing the Gloria Patre. Please be seated. And we are going to talk about a cup of cold water among some other things this morning. Jesus said, anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple. I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Well, Jesus, I think, is speaking about two things that are going to guide our discussion today. First, he's talking about people pleasing. And second, he's talking about loving in the simplest way. And this might be as small as offering a cup of cold water. We're gonna talk about people pleasing and loving, and then we're gonna wrap up with how important our loving can be. That small gesture, that small cup of cold water. So let's first talk about people pleasing. It's something that we all do. And I think that's what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about receiving a righteous man or a prophet. They're important people, or we receive them that way, and we try to respect them that way. I think he's talking about pleasing them. We are nice to those people we respect or people that we want to impress. And people-pleasing means that we get people-pleasing rewards. And what might they be? They like us, or they might do something for us. So if you're not familiar with what people-pleasing is, let me talk about some people-pleasing activities that I do and you do. We all do it to some degree or at the other. We compliment people sometimes to to, just to please them. We agree with people even if we don't agree with what they're talking about just to please them. They might like a politician that we could even detest, but when we're talking to them, he's okay. They might stand for an issue that we don't agree with, but we say we agree with what they like just to please them. People might gossip, and what do we do? We go along with it because we want to please people. And I've done this more than once. We laugh at stupid jokes that aren't funny at all just to please the person who tells us the stupid joke. Receiving people to please them for whoever they are means that we get the reward that they have for us 
and that is merely that they just might like us. And we all do people-pleasing to some degree. The reward of people-pleasing is kind of shallow. I think that's what Jesus, I mean, on reading between the lines there, it's not too big of a reward. So let's shift from people-pleasing to the second thing that Jesus was talking about. And that's loving in the simplest of ways. Jesus tells us that when we offer even the smallest tokens of acceptance or love to one of Jesus' little ones, we are actually doing it to Jesus himself. So what might a cup of cold water be? It's a little act of kindness, or it's a little gift. It may be something that you do. It may be an offering that we give to someone or even in the plate that we put out here at Grace Lower Stone. <clears throat> and I'm going to, I've received many cups of cold water, many cups right here. But I just want to give you an example from years ago. I had been, become a functional alcoholic many, many years ago. And I didn't know what to do. And when I got the courage to try to, to have that changed, I didn't know where to go. I went to my family doctor. And he put me later in the month into the hospital so I could detox. And I checked in at the hospital. And while I was there, it was the loneliest time of my entire life up, up to that point. And I can remember my dear friend Don, who came to visit me when I was in that hospital. And I can still visualize it just today, even though it was many years ago, those glass doors and the glass parts that they had, seeing him come through. And I was just so touched that he was coming to see me. His visit was a cup of cold water for me. And it will always be a special gift to me. I'll always remember it. His cup of cold water to me was priceless. And that's how these cups of cold water are. I have no idea what kind of reward Jesus has given to Don, because Don is with Jesus now. But I know from what Jesus said, he, he will not lose his reward. My friends, cups of cold waters can be visits like that. They can be cards or notes. They can be telephone calls. They can be an encouraging word. They can be giving food or doing something. They can be offerings of monies, like what we do here and you know elsewhere. They can be our prayers. So we've talked about those two things, pleasing people and loving people. And what should we take home from all of this? Don't overlook the impact of a cup of cold water. Small acts of love may seem insignificant, in fact, we may be tempted to not do them because they're just so small. But I assure all of you that your small acts of love in our church and in our community have huge impacts, some of which you will never know about. You know, some of us, some of you teach Sunday school or visit people or write people or just love people with your comments or some of the gestures you do, and they have unseen rewards in this world and most assuredly beyond. Well, I heard a story, and it impressed me because it was so long ago, over 40 years ago, and it fits in with what we're talking about. So I'm going to tell you this. There, there was a young man and he was going to college. He was studying to be a doctor. And while he was going to college, 
he sold books on the side to raise money for his tuition and expenses. And what he would do, he'd walk from door to door and he had a list of books. And he knocked on the door of this house and a lady came and answered the door. And he said, ma'am, would you like to buy one of these books? And she said, my young friend, I don't have any money to buy any of your books. But it's a hot day and you've been out walking. Would you like to come in and have a glass of cold milk? So he did. And years later, he actually did become a surgeon. And that very lady, who didn't remember him, but he remembered her, became very ill. And she needed a surgery that he performed for her. And she became well. And after her surgery, it was several weeks, she was supposed to go and see him at the office. And she did, and she came with her bill. And she was crying and said, there's no way I can pay this bill. And so he took the bill from her, and as he wrote, he said, paid in full with a glass of cold milk. So my friends, as Jesus told us, and I think we'll have rewards here sometimes, if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Amen. Our closing hymn today, let's rise to sing My Country Tis of, of Thee on page 807. Remember to go next door in the fellowship hall and line up in the hallway and then go to the right. Be generous in your offering on the box. And so let us uh, ask the Lord to bless that food and we'll have a closing benediction. Lord, we thank you for this day and the freedoms we have of America. We thank you for this food we're about to receive and we ask for your blessing on it. So Lord, may you bless our great country and may the Lord bless you and be gracious to each of you and grant you peace. Amen.